random comforting thought. Look at this. Look at the amount of algae in this water. It's very comforting to know that this Black Bay 58 has the water resistance to go to the death of that. Welcome back to another Odd Pal video. I am at Toroko Station. I just came out Pulse. from the station. Um, I took this train called the Sagano Toroko Romantic Train. It wasn't very romantic, but the scenery was quite good. You would go through a mountain and you see the lake and a lot of nature oriented things. Um, standing here in front of a what I guess is a rice field and I want to talk a little bit about the watch buying experience, shopping experience that I've had so far here in Japan. I've been to Shinjuku, Shibuya, Nakano, Osaka and now in Kyoto and I've gone to both used watch stores and also the brand new watch stores like your AD boutiques, um, pretty much every major mall at every major station will have boutiques on the 5th or 6th floor that you can go up to with brands like Tudor, Longines, Tussauds, Tag Heuer, and then your mid-tier um, Omega, Breitling, Panerai. Frank Miller is in there, I don't know exactly where to put Frank Miller. Rolex is in there and Rolex always has a line outside. And you can see the train coming by here. You probably can't hear me, so okay. Well, that was a fast train. Um, yeah, Rolex, there's always a Rolex in every mall and sometimes even two or three uh, Rolex stores, but there's nothing to be bought. There's huge lines outside. They don't have anything. They don't have brochures. They don't even have stock for you to try on. And uh, overall, I want to say like, oh, I probably shouldn't go in this tunnel because it's going to get all echoey, but it's not the best experience when it comes to buying from ADs here in Japan or even just visiting ADs because I guess it's kind of part of over tourism where there's just so many like people from random countries coming asking if there's any sports models to be bought um, but these 80s aren't exactly friendly like compared to Canada and I know if you guys are from Canada you might think as a joke like Canada is like a super friendly country but I think Canada 80s are overall a lot more friendlier because they allow you to take pictures they you know sometimes I go into like Rolex in downtown waterfront and the first thing they ask you is would you like water sparkling or champagne without even buying anything and on the other hand here it's like if you go in someone looks at you they don't know what language you speak you don't know the language that they speak either and they kind of are hesitant to ask you questions and then you kind of just walk around the store looking at things um, everything is exhibition models only you can try on certain watches but they are all like tiny day just or even lady day just i didn't see any 36 millimeter models that you can try on um so overall like i would recommend if you guys are coming here to japan to buy a watch just don't go to the 80s it's a little bit of a waste of time in my opinion um i've gone to the point where when i go into the malls i just i skip the 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 watch brands completely because there's really nothing to be seen there now the real gem is when you go to the second hand watch shops your okuras your quarks your watch nians and uh, sometimes there's like geographical local watch stores that sell like handbags and watches those are the ones that you want to check out because there are a lot of good and pretty special things there that myself uh coming from canada i don't usually see some models like those i've seen youtube videos about how in japan a lot of secondhand watch stores especially in nakano don't let you record or take pictures of their watch and I, I haven't found that to be true at all there's not been a single store that i've been in that has said hey no filming no filming except this one time when i went into frank Mueller and i was like can i take a picture she's like sure and i started recording and she's like no filming no filming <laughs> and other than that all other watch shops that i've been in what I usually do is like I'll, I'll go around and make my rounds, check out what stock they have, and then I'll ask to try on like one or two watches just so they think that you know you have an intent to purchase, which I do. Um, instead of just going there and randomly pulling out your phone and start recording the whole store, like for sure, like nobody likes that. Even not just in watches, but I'm sure in other industries, they don't like when people just 
walk in, not say a word, and start pulling out their phone and recording stuff. But Once you go in, all the staff are generally very nice to you, even though if they don't speak English or whatever your language might be, they'll all like bow and nod to you and just, just smile back at them, you know, ask them what watches they have in stock, make conversation with them. And uh, what I usually do is I'll try on a few watches. Um, one, when I'm trying on the watches, I'll ask to take pictures of them and that's usually the green light of like being able to take pictures and you know myself because I want to make these YouTube videos. That's why I got to record. But if you guys are just considering um, different models, like you're trying to compare prices, maybe you're looking for a five digit Rolex and you want to compare like the chamfers and the edges and the polishing work, then you can for sure take pictures or even videos um, of specific models that you're looking for. And overall, I think the secondhand watch shopping experience here in Japan is excellent. Like I have no complaints about it. I haven't been to a used watch store in Vancouver just yet. So I don't really have a benchmark to compare to. But what I want to say the secondhand watch buying experience here in Japan are a lot better than the experience you would get at an authorized dealer. Another thing to note about buying a watch here in Japan is that some shops on top of the 10% tax free exemption, they will also give you a discount if you pay in cash instead. Uh, for example, the Big Moon shop that I was in, they had a price for the Black Bay 58, the 925 silver, but then they also had a separate price for tax exemption, which is 10% less. And then on top of that, they had a discount. Just like a store-wide promotion until September 30th. And then they had another price, which is like if you pay cash, I think it's like 3% less. It's very similar to Canada, for example, where some shops will give you a discount if you um, let them skip out on the credit card fee. So if you're planning to buy a watch in Japan, I would recommend just bring yen over from wherever country that you're coming from. It's gonna make things a lot easier. Also, I wanna mention that before you come to Japan, it's pretty important to get <laughs> it's pretty important to get in touch with whichever credit card issuer that you're using like for example for me in Canada we have like BMO, TD, CIBC, RBC all these different banks you want to let them know that you're going to be traveling because sometimes when you want to run a big amount on your card or even like a small amount like your Suica for example the card might decline and depending on how many cards you have if your card declines then there's really nothing for you to do you just have to either not spend money or you need to use your actual SIM card to call your bank to get them to reactivate your card. It's like a whole pain to go through. So just make sure that you either get in touch with your bank first or you bring enough yen to not have to worry about that at all. It is blazing hot today, 34 degrees outside. I am, I am so drenched. I don't know if you're able to tell. Um, I want to conclude this video by saying that it's been a great time here in Japan looking at watches, checking out bookstores for magazines about watches, looking at the architecture, lots of interesting things here um, around me. There's like a touristy area, there's a cafe somewhere over here called Arabica Percentage and a lot of people are taking photos, Instagram shots, reels, you name it, over there. But it's a very aesthetically pleasing area. It's got a lot of like, I guess older buildings infused with more modern aspects. And I think it's a lot of villas and real guns for people to stay at. Um, I am headed back to Tokyo in two days from the Kyoto region. And I think I might pick up a watch or end up picking up a watch by the end of this trip. Not super sure yet. There's this one store that I want to go visit. It's not exactly in the greater Tokyo area, but in this town called, oh, I'm blanking, but the shop is called Turuya, T-U-R-U-Y-A. And they have this watch that I saw on Chrono 24, but because I want to avoid the fees and I want to get tax exempt and everything like that, I'm going to go find them in person and see if the price can come down slightly. I'm not gonna spoil what brand or what model it is. Um, I know I just did a video talking about what brand I'm most likely going to purchase. It is one of those seven brands or eight brands if you count the Breitling in the description. So stay tuned for that video. It's gonna be coming out very soon. 
And as of this moment, I don't know if I'm gonna end up buying that watch yet. I need to check out the condition and all the details of the package. Uh, but for you guys, you just gotta wait a couple of days so you don't have that uncertainty that I have right now. But thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>